Coach, you told me in the beginning of the season that your defense was going to win games for you. Yeah, absolutely. How'd they get it done today? You know what? I mean, uh, you know, we lost some field position, and, and you know, they were awesome. I mean, and, and what a way to end it with Malik getting a sack, another sack for his career. So uh, just happy for our seniors. What a great day to be a Leopard. Since you mentioned him, Malik Ham, what does he mean to this program? Oh, he's he's everything. I mean, he's the heart and soul of all these guys. And uh, like I said, I mean, I couldn't be prouder of him. So for coming back. Coach, you've been in a lot of these games, both as a player, as a coach. Your first one as a head coach yeah. for Lafayette to win. How does this feel? Pretty good. You know what I mean? You know, it's never easy, right? 14-11. You know, it's, it's hard to do. So, you know, for us to get it, uh, it means something to these seniors. Coach, congratulations. Go and enjoy it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Gary. Mike, you, Mike, you've been on the winning end of these games. There is <laughs> nothing like it. No. It just it just means everything to you because you think about it all season, especially when you're a senior, and this week goes by so quickly. It's the last time you put your pads in your pants. It's the last time you may have to clean out your locker, the last time you lace them up. And all you want to do is contribute, and you want to be on that winning end. I was lucky enough twice to be on the winning end both times at home my freshman year and my sophomore, my junior year we lost both games at lehigh and the last game at taylor stadium but i tell you what there's nothing like it and just not just for the kids but for the parents and all these kids that have gone through covid and they've gone through the lack of a season and then a three game season in the spring you know this is a different bunch of kids and malik ham has led the senior group along with marco olivas you cannot be more than just feel it in your heart. And I got the shakes right now because this team deserves it, and John Troxell took them there. An interesting note. The last time Lafayette won a home game before a Lafayette Lehigh crowd, a crowd of 12,000 that they had here today, was back in 2006. They beat Lehigh in a COVID game where there was barely anybody in the stands. They beat Lehigh when they took on Lehigh at Yankee Stadium, Stadium. as the home team. Yep. But today, before a home crowd here at Fisher Stadium, the first time they've beaten Lehigh since 2006. And also, Gary, this, this senior class goes out with three wins three out, of out of four, which is really hasn't been done in a long, long time. And, Mike, we, we would love to pay some patronage to the seniors yep. that are on this ball club, but there is a lot of question about <laughs> whether they will be here Back. or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A number of them have indicated they're going to play another season. And, and you know what? I told the uh, guys like John Olmstead, and I told guys like, uh, um, you know, uh, Olivas and, and, and the rest of these guys is, you know what? Sooner or later, your playing time is over. They always say it. Either you're told it at 18 or you're told at 40 in baseball, it's over. But at a certain point in time, you know, you got to play as long as you can. And when I was at the dinner Thursday night, a lot of those kids said just that. I'm going to play as long as I can. And it's important to get some of these guys back. The only guy we won't get back is Malik Ham. But you know what? We wish him the best because he's going to play somewhere. Yeah, he absolutely will play somewhere. And, you know, at the luncheon this week, we both had an opportunity to talk yeah. to Malik, to Marco Olivas. You made a, a, a great point to both of them about how you never quite know when it's your last game. But Malik knew this was his last Lafayette game. And uh, everybody, I think, kind of wanted to win a game for Malik, for themselves. And, uh, you know, I think you gave them the uh, the incentive to go back into the locker room and get that point across, which uh, obviously they did. They played with a lot of heart today, uh, even though this ball game was certainly not picture perfect. Well, think about how he bookended his career, Gary. The, his freshman year, he gets the sack that ends the game. Is that is this that ends the game again for him here? So what a career. I mean, boy, did he turn it up and take it to a different level here in the fourth quarter, and it's exactly what the Leopards needed. Lehigh found themselves in a position to do what they did last week, and Lafayette would not let that happen. So the Leopards beat Sacred Heart, Bucknell, Colgate, and Lehigh this year. They'll finish the season four and seven. They'll finish the Patriot League three and three. They will finish in third place in the Patriot League behind Holy Cross and Fordham. Lehigh, on the other hand, they go to two and nine, two and four in the Patriot League. And uh, of course, both coaches obviously now one building on this win and the other having to deal with this loss. And now they're going to announce the most valuable player, I believe. We 
there's there's certainly a couple of nominees. Billy Schaefer being one of them. Yep. Uh, Malik Ham being Malik Ham, another. Yep. And uh, Curtis. Jamar Curtis possibly. Sure. And I thought for Lehigh, their quarterback had an excellent ball game. Yeah. I thought Dante Perry did a great job. And, and if you look at some of the other players, the, the one of the wide receivers there, uh, uh, Jamili had a nice game as well. Johnson came up with a big play. And if you look, I mean, if you look at both teams, they both really struggle on the offensive line, and it showed its head. So again, we're, we're awaiting the announcement. I thought it was coming. Instead, they go to the boss for glory days. <laughs> Such a good feeling to win this ball game. I'm telling you what, you just can't put it into words and, and it means so much to John Troxell. You know John Troxell has lived without his family this entire season. Yes. They're all still down in Lancaster. His daughter's finishing. She's going to be coming here next year. So think about what he's gone through. I mean obviously living at home getting some good cooking from yeah, his mom. mom. He but lives at right the same the time river. he's away from his family and he's trying to put things together trying to keep the staff together and they've done a great job. Let's go down to the field. Malik Ham is with Megan. Malik you win this game your senior season your final year as a leopard how would you describe what this means to you oh it means a lot you know last year we went out on a loss and just to come back and i get the win for the guys it felt pretty good a massive play for you as well how did you really just put it all out there on the field oh uh, you know it's my last you know last play <laughs> or last 15 minutes this is my last game with my teammates. So, you know, I just had to leave it all out there with them. And they want to leave no regrets on the field. So we talked a little bit about legacy earlier this week. What is the legacy you're hoping to leave at Lafayette? Uh, I'm just hoping that, you know, they, those guys trust me or like in 20 years, they look back and think about how uh, they could trust me or depend on me to do something for them. And uh, that's the only thing I want to be remembered for. Malik, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Gary. All right, Megan, thank you very much. We doubt we now do know that Billy Schaefer, number 21, <laughs> is the Lafayette Leopard MVP. Mike, for a lot of reasons. He played a heck of a linebacker today. Yep. He he intercepted and returned it for a kick for a uh, sick pick six. Yep. And he snapped, I don't know how many punts. I gotta <laughs> Too check. Many. Too many is right. Too Ten many. times perfect snaps. And he had the fumble on the uh, on the punt, well, dropped punt recovery. by Donovan Thomas too. So you get a look at Billy Schaefer right there. Nobody deserves it more than him. If you'd have told him in week three when he was sitting, he had he was wheeling himself at the pen yeah. game with me up and down the sideline with a scooter and a broken foot, and uh, he's come back so well. So proud of him. It could have easily been anybody on that defense, including Malik Ham. As yep. we're going to go to the highlights Let's right go. now. Let's take a look at the highlights right here. And, you know, Lehigh put up a big fight. They did a great job offensively, but it really started off with Curtis, the 71-yard run. He's another guy that was in the running for the MVP. He ended up with over 100 yards rushing. His first 100-yard game, I believe, as a Lafayette Leopard. That got the game off to a 7-0 start. And then you see the overthrow here, and that kind of put Billy Schaefer in the lead for the MVP but look at the effort he does here and obviously Jair Stevens is another wonderful player leading Billy into the end zone. Lafayette had the 14 nothing lead you thought okay they may blow this one out well Lee came right back got the ball down the field Dylan Van Dusen with the uh, field goal made it 14 to 3 and we sat there for a long time until this play by Eric Johnson who had dropped a couple balls a couple overthrown balls right there by Dante Perry but Johnson with the big one-handed catch over the corner Dubois it's 14-9. Remember, they went for two and didn't get it at 14-9. They needed a touchdown. Lafayette in the red zone stopped Dante Perry. And then the end of the game here, Malik Camp, who easily, easily could have been the MVP. And he's been the MVP of this team many, many times. But look how happy Malik Cam and that Lafayette team is standing on the L at midfield. Just to bring you an update on the Patriot League, Holy Cross will finish the season undefeated as they win today by a 47 to 10 score over Georgetown. They will be heading towards the playoffs. Fordham and Colgate still a ball game. Fordham 38, Colgate 31. So that one not quite over yet as, as Fordham is battling to get into the NCAA playoffs. We're battling to try to get Billy Schaefer <laughs> to Megan so she can have a bit of a conversation with him. And... Uh, all right, she is ready with Billy Schaefer. Here's Megan. 
Thanks so much, Gary. Billy, MVP, what does it mean to you to have this honor in this game? It means a lot. This is a special game. Um, there's a lot of energy around it. Um, and yeah, we just came out here and we played hard all game, played to the final whistle, and it means so much. A game that really did come down to the final yeah. whistle. What was the difference maker for your team today? Uh, I think we, we started getting after him in the fourth quarter a little bit, the quarterback, making him feel uncomfortable. Um, we were stopping the run pretty good all day, but yeah, I think, I think just getting after the quarterback in the end. Malik did a great job off the edge two times to steal the game for us, so yeah. There's been a lot of conversations about how this year feels different for your team. Mm -hmm. How different is it playing this year? Yeah, this is a special group. We didn't obviously we didn't uh, accomplish all our goals we had it set, but I mean, you, you just saw flashes of greatness all year from us, and I think going forward we're going to be able to build off that, and hopefully next year oh. we'll come back and just just be more consistent, honestly. So, Billy, congratulations. Thank you, Gary. You know what I love, though? Yeah. He now changed my answer to the <laughs> trivia question. He did. He is the first Lafayette defensive player to be the most valuable player of this game. He did. You know, you look back at the Super Bowl, there's only, I think, been one. Chuck Howley, I oh, think, for I the Cowboys, was the only that. defensive MVP. It's hard to do, but you know what? He, put, he, he filled up the score sheet, and he scored a touchdown today. Could have easily been Malik. And, again, you know, Billy Schaefer, well-deserved. All right, we're going to get out of here before we go down on the field. Mike, another great year. Yes. It's been terrific. I enjoy being up in the booth with you because I learned so much football, as everybody that I talk to tells me. Uh, they learned more football than they ever knew. Thanks to John Bede Moment. He's been our spotter all season. And, of course, uh, the entire RCN and, of course, Astound now, television crew. We thank them so much for uh, all their help and uh, Chris Zaya has been our director and the rest of the crew doing a terrific job. So we're done up here. Thanks so much for spending time with us all season. I'll see you during basketball season. Mike will too. Let's go down to Megan to wrap this up. Thanks so, thanks so much, Gary. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here with my partners in crime <laughs> down here. But, guys, I mean, defense was the real story, especially down the stretch in this one. How did it stand out to you? Well, befitting ending, right? Yeah. You know, we have Malik Ham coming up with the, the sack at the end of the game and, and previously Bach in the past, you know, to end that Lehigh drive. Um, just, you know, they've carried us all season, you know, no – uh, no hard knocks on the offense, but, you know, they've carried us, the defense has. John, how special of a player is Malik Ham? Well, I'll throw a question right back at you. <laughs> how fitting is it that mm -hmm. a player like Malik yeah. Ham, sack record holder, ends his Lafayette career on the final play of the Lafayette Lehigh football game, yeah. uh, going out to secure the win, uh, good things happening to good people. Uh, there's an example right there. And and to go off that point a little bit about just how good of a person Malik Ham is, I was talking to him post game about legacy, and he it wasn't anything about football for him with what he hopes to leave with Lafayette. It is about the impact he's had on his teammates, the trust and the love that he has from them, and I think that that just speaks volumes to who he is as a person even more so. But what what can this team really build off of what we are able to see? Well, game. starts here, right? Yeah. You know, starts off with this big win, you know, and I want to go back to uh, also what, what you were talking about in terms of, you know, impact plays. You know, you had Billy Schaefer who yeah. didn't get to play, right? We missed him a lot, not only defensively, but uh, long snapping. And he comes up and basically, you know, has the game-winning touchdown in that interception. So, you know, you build off of that. You show that you, you, know, you never quit. Uh, you know, I think that, that kind of attitude uh, we'll get, you know, there's a couple guys that I think that are thinking about coming back for another year. Um, that kind of attitude, this kind of win will we'll help with that. This kind of, like, it's winning the rivalry game. I, I mean, I feel like... I at the end of the day, when you look at a season, it, this is something that to just end your season on this much of a high note, you, you can't end it any better. Well, it's happened 158 times yeah. before, <laughs> one way or the other. Yeah. You're either very, very happy yes. or very, very <laughs> sad. But it really, to your point, both of you, uh, the game means more than just a game. Yeah. Um, 
my thought about this one was, and I talked to Phil about this a moment ago, it's kind of a microcosm of our season. And as John Troxell completes his first year as coach, um, you get the sense that this is what he wanted to build. Yeah. Yes, we were limited. Uh, he's instituting a new system. He's got some new people on offense. The offense did struggle, but the defense did pick them up. It's been like that all year long. The thing that impressed me is this team showed a lot of heart yeah. throughout the year. Really, Phil, when you think about it, there are three games we were completely out of, three. Yeah. Uh, there was one clunker with Georgetown. Other than that, this team battled every minute, every down of every game, and I think there's a lot to build on here for John Troxell and his staff. And, and to build on that a little bit, but to Phil, how exciting is it now looking at one year under the belt in the John Troxell area? Yeah, sure. I think you got, you know, good prospects coming up, you know, and now you're going to go out, I think, change some things in terms of what you do recruiting wise. Um, and, uh, and, you know, you look forward to the future. Yeah. We, we've got the future right here, right <laughs> yes. in front of us, the, the future of something. They're not storming the field the way you used to, don't feel. <laughs> final, my it final wasn't question. that family friendly back then. <laughs> I heard some stories. I heard some stories. <laughs> final thoughts when you look at, at this season as a whole, guys. I, I really am curious to know what are some of your biggest takeaways from this year? Well, you know, the, the first thing, if you're the coaches, uh, in about four or five hours, they're going to be up in that building right there, yeah. figuring out what they need to do. Special teams got to be addressed in the offseason. Uh, John feels really good about the offensive line coming back. Uh, boy, it would be great to see a couple of these defensive players come back next year. But again, I think the foundation has been laid. And Phil, you can speak to that more than I because you've been through this before and you know uh, that next year starts right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's, you know, it's, you look back, it's been a frustrating year, I think, especially offensively in terms of what we've been able to do. But, you know, we just talked about it. This is a big win. It's something to build off of and, uh, and move towards the, you know, the next step in John Troxell's future. Well, gang, it's been a blast this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sad our season is over. We need we need more games. We need more games. So how did you, your first Lafayette League? Congratulations. Yes, yes, uh, a blast. I think it's just, it's similar to what the players say and what the coaches say when they're talking to freshmen, right? You don't right. know what it's like until you really experience it. Anyone can tell you the energy, the excitement, the, the craziness that happens that only happens in this game. You really do have to experience yep. it. It is a special special rivalry and we are really lucky to be able to be a part of it it is so much fun and that is going to do it from us we are going to sign off for one final time this season filling john leone and myself megan caffrey we cannot wait to be back with you again next year